Hey folks, Tim Newman with Soft Light Studios coming to you once again from a albeit rainy and dreary Columbus, Ohio, where the weather's got me staying indoors and staying away from that nasty coronavirus. And at the same time, it's all cool because I'm spending the day playing with photography, Lightroom, and Photoshop. So I got to ask you, have you ever been working on selections in Photoshop and you just can't figure out what's inside the selection and what's outside the selection? Well, then you're not alone. Everybody's been there with you. But here is a really cool tool and some insights into how this tool works that will definitely help you out. Take a look. So let's jump right over here into Photoshop with a document that I have open and take a look at this tool that I am referring to. Let's say that you're in Photoshop and you're working on a rather complex selection and there's some possible issues that you're having with that selection. One is you're having a hard time determining in your mind what's the mask going to look like when this is turned into a mask versus what are all these marching ants looking like? Or maybe you're trying to clean up the edges of a selection and you really want to see those edges a lot cleaner than the selection marching ants alone are allowing you to see. Or last but not least, you're having a heck of a time figuring out what's inside the marching ants and what's outside the marching ants. So let's jump right over to the left-hand side of Photoshop here, take a look at the toolbar, and we'll start explaining what this tool is and the ways you can put it to work. The tool is right over here in the toolbar, almost at the very bottom, and it is the Edit in Quick Mask Mode tool. Now, before we jump into this tool, there are two things that I want to talk about. One is, look at our foreground and background colors here. Just pay attention to those real quickly because I want you to observe something that happens here every time that you jump in and out of this tool. Second, as you're hovering over this tool, you'll notice if my IntelliTip will come back up here, that the shortcut key for this tool is the Q key. And honestly, I would recommend that you remember that shortcut key because it's real easy just to hop in and out of this tool just by hitting that Q key like you see me doing here. Now, what you'll notice as I'm turning this tool on and back off with that Q key, look at the foreground and background colors. They instantly change to black and white. And when you come back out of the tool, they instantly change to whatever the foreground and background color were before you enter the tool. So the Quick Mask tool is showing you what the mask is going to look like. And as you may or may not know by now, the only thing that can exist in a mask is black, white, or grayscales. So it's constraining that color set for you based on the fact that this is going to be a mask. Now, you notice that this is in this kind of reddish color. This is the default that Photoshop comes with for this color. And this red color actually comes from a film known as Rubylith film, which was used back in the days when we did lithographic printing. Now, lithographic printing is still done, so it's not like it's a technology that's gone, but this is something from really Darkroom's past that we're kind of seeing thrown in here to Photoshop as kind of a, a cool nod towards history. So if I zoom in here, and I'll come down here to this upper right-hand corner, I can see that my selection here is not really all that great. It's uh, having a hard time differentiating between the pepper here and the shadow that's falling off into the white background. What's really cool about this quick back mask mode is I can edit the selection right here. And basically that's as simple as grabbing a tool like the paintbrush tool. Obviously I got a pretty big brush here, so I'm gonna use that left bracket key and I'm gonna size down. And you can see I'm accidentally painting the mask the wrong direction here. No problem, just switch foreground and background colors. And as you know, that's the X key. So now white is my foreground color, as you can see looking over here at the color picker, and black is my background color, meaning I'm now pointing, painting with white. And you can see, I'm really easily cleaning up this mask without having to use the traditional selection tools. Now, a couple of things that you're gonna to have to keep in mind when you're using this is brush hardness matters. So I could come in here and right click and say, well, I need this brush edge to be a lot harder, right? Because that's what I want here. And now you can see that's cleaning up a lot better. Now down here, you can see that I went a little too far. I'm gonna make my brush smaller, switch my background and foreground colors again, and paint the mask back in. 
The other thing that you can see as you're using this ruby lift tool is you can see as you paint, you're getting darker reds in some area or you're getting cleaner whites in some area. And what you're doing is you are actually making the mask more or less denser. So when you're using some of the selection tools, they feather the edges and that would be the anti-alias feature that's turned on. And what you're doing potentially is unfeathering these edges, right? So I'm gonna switch back to white as my foreground tool. And you can see here, no problem going up and cleaning up the edge of this selection. And if I, oops, get a little too far, hit that X key, go back the other way with the other color. It's a really nice interactive process because it's real easy to just hit that X key and flip back and forth between black and white at will. So I think this quick mask mode is really pretty cool. I'm gonna do a Command Zero on the Mac. That's a Control Zero on Windows. You can see I've got a much cleaner edge down here in this selection now. And it was real easy to go in and paint it visually. Uh, if you combine this with something like a Wacom tablet and a tablet uh, pen, you can get really, really good and clean at those edits. Uh, getting out of the quick mask mode, just as simple as hitting the Q key. Any changes that you have made to the selection, you can see them here, how much cleaner this line is, they go back to the selection. So let's talk about one potential issue with the quick mask mode and a real easy way to solve this issue. And to do that, we're gonna come over here and we're gonna take a look at this red portrait. Anybody have any idea what we're gonna run into here? All right, I won't keep you in suspense too long. Let's go ahead and make it happen and you'll see what the issue is pretty quick. So I'm gonna grab the magic wand tool and uh, I'm gonna try to make a selection here. Wow, what's inside, what's outside? You can see that the tolerance on the Magic Wand tool uh, really uh, gave the tool some real confusing issues to deal with here. So let's go into the quick mask mode with that Q key. Well, now the question is, what's the background and what's the red that was originally in the picture to start off with? No problem, double click on the quick mask mode icon and right down here you can see that you can change the color of the quick mask icon so i can click on the color picker square right here and i could go sample the color out of the document if i wanted to or i could say you know what i really think the quick mask mode here needs to be in a complementary color this real bright green and that is going to make it real easy to see where the mask is and where it's not now the question is, why did my quick mask mode not change color? Try to, oh, there it is. Uh, little uh, display hiccup there in Photoshop, but we got that figured out. So now you can see that this green that we're seeing here is where the selection is, and this red on the outside is where the selection's not. So let's grab our paintbrush tool. We're gonna make our cursor much bigger here, and I'm gonna start painting. Well, must be the wrong color because I'm wiping out the mask. X key, ah, there's the right color. Now I'm fixing things up. So you can see by being able to change the quick mask mode ruby lift color, if you will, it makes it a lot easier to see what you're doing. Let's just double click in here again and talk about a couple of other features that we have here. I can change the opacity of the color that I'm using as my quote unquote ruby lift color, I could say, well, let's make this 85%. Let's see what happens. You can see that Photoshop's having a little bit of a problem with display updating. I had to go back into quick mask mode a second time. It automatically seems to be flipping it out of that mode. But if you click on the icon or hit the Q key again, you're back in there, no problem. Let's double click one more time. You can also flip around what you want to be the masked area and what you want to be the selected area. Now, I'm again losing the version of the masks that I'm seeing here, so I'm gonna to have to hit the Q key to load it back up again. Just seems to be a little display driver hiccup in this newer version of Photoshop. Just remember to hit that Q key one more time and it's updating effectively. So if you get in there and all of a sudden this is not flipping like you'd like it to, just go ahead and hit the OK button and hit the Q key a second time and it brings it up. So Photoshop's just got a little display update issue there. So there you have it, the quick mask mode in Photoshop. And I think once you get used to it and you start to use it, you realize that it's a really effective way to get a much quicker visualization of what that selection is actually 
having selected, and you can also see the feathering effects of some of the tools and some of the anti-aliased edges, if you will, in a way that the marching ants can't display at all. Well, that's it. The quick mask mode in Photoshop. I uh, hope it helps you as much as it helped me. I hope you guys are staying indoors and staying safe and looking forward to getting out there and shooting out in the uh, wild spaces of what we would normally refer to as the public soon. Um, remember, learning equals skills. Practice equals mastery. We'll see you out there. <music>